Hey y'all, do any of you wanna see a total noob, myself, install, unbox, and then do a little review on a Ring home security system? If so, you're in the right place. That's what we got coming up. As per usual, I'm going to start off with a little unboxing. If you're interested in this product, you'll first notice that there are quite a few package options. This exact one happens to be the 10 piece from Costco, but there are largely similar ones available at other retailers. All include the base station and keypad, but differ in number of sensors. As we'll get into in a moment, this isn't the one I'd recommend. Six door and window sensors is too many in my opinion. I'd opt for the one with just enough sensors to cover each door. Right now, for $239, Amazon has an 8-piece kit with 3 door sensors and 2 motion sensors. One more than the Costco version, plus a free Echo Dot. I'll place a link to this SKU in the description below. This is an Amazon associate link for which I'll earn a small commission if used. It won't cost the buyer anything additional, but does help support the channel. Use of this is greatly appreciated. Before unboxing, we notice the package itself is a nice soft touch material. A good sign in my opinion. First thing out is the instruction manual, warranty card, and a protected by ring sticker. Most of the time, instructions go right in the trash. But as I know nothing about installing a security system, I'll actually be taking a look at this one. The first piece of hardware we see is the security base station. This is what ties the whole system together. The Ring home security system uses, uses the Z-Wave low power home automation standard. Despite being a Z-Wave hub, the base station cannot be used to control non-Ring devices. This is a big oversight in my opinion. It really seems like Ring should have gone the extra mile and allowed the base station the ability to control non-Ring Z-Wave devices. The unit itself feels well built. It's got a decent weight to it. On the back, we see ports for both power and a wired Ethernet connection. I really like the fact that Ring has gone ahead and provided a little cord relief area on the underside of the unit. Removing the plastic molding that held the base station in place and we reveal the keypad. Motion sensor, Z-Wave range extender, and the six window or door sensors. Looking at the contact sensors first, and they have a bit of weight to them, each is powered by a single CR123A lithium battery that Ring claims is good for up to three years. To prevent early discharge, each is protected by a user-removable piece of plastic insulation. Next out is the Z-Wave range extender. In my opinion, I doubt it will be necessary since all sensors are relatively close to the base station. But I'll use it since I've got it. Here, I like that Ring has built a small screw mount on top. This is to secure the device to the outlet and prevent someone from accidentally unplugging. The motion sensor is extremely light. Like the contact sensors, it too is powered by a CR123A lithium battery that Ring claims is good for three years. I'm really happy Ring is using a common battery. Replacements can be bought online for about $2 each. No annoying proprietary cells here. The final piece of hardware out of the box is the keypad. It feels kind of cheap. The buttons don't feel very robust and overall, it doesn't give the impression of quality. Honestly, it appears to be the least impressive piece so far. I find this disappointing because it also happens to be the only part of the system that will receive regular human contact. On the bottom of the kit, we've got power cords for everything that are all nicely labeled. The very last thing we've got to work with is the additional parts and installation accessories box. In here, we found the mounting bracket for the main sensor, as well as all the magnetic counterparts to the contact sensors. After getting everything unboxed, you'll next want to head over to your app store of choice and download Ring Always Home. In the iOS store, it's currently got just a tad over three stars out of 14.6 thousand reviews, and I consider this pretty accurate. It's a functional app, but far from flawless. 
Though I haven't had any problems post-installation, getting everything paired up took a couple of tries. Additionally, I also have a ring doorbell that the app oftentimes cannot connect to. Not sure if it's the hardware or the software's fault, but it's really annoying. Ring really should spend some more R&D dollars here. It's not like their hardware is particularly cheap, it should follow that their app isn't either. The next order of business is pairing the base station and the app. To do this, you'll first need to power on the unit and press the pair button. This creates an ad hoc Wi-Fi network that you'll need to connect to before proceeding. Once the app and base station get to know each other, you'll be prompted to enter your home network password. Annoyingly, this took several tries. For whatever reason, the base station seemed to have a really hard time with my network credentials. It took about three tries. Before proceeding any further, the base station will download and install some updates. This took about five minutes. But I wasn't really keeping track. While this is going on, you'll be treated to a little light show. After all this is taken care of, you'll go through the motions of pairing and setting up all the remaining pieces. It would have been nice if they were already paired to the base station from the factory. But oh well, a very minor convenience. The keypad and range extender are AC powered. They begin their pairing process when first plugged in. The other pieces are battery powered and can be paired when the contact insulators, aka little plastic pull tabs, are, re are removed. Some paired without issue, others took a couple tries. Pairing the sensors is just step one. Step two is setting them up. This involves letting the app know where they will be placed. This makes a difference as the location determines the alarm delay as well as how they show up in your app. To keep track of everything, I would recommend placing each sensor at its intended location before moving on. If you were to just toss them aside after setup, it would be very easy to get them mixed up. After configuring the sensors and letting the app know exactly where they'll be placed, I went ahead and installed the keypad. I wish there was a more elegant solution to mounting this. The option to hardware would have been nice. The keypad bracket itself is fine, but it's kind of annoying to have a USB cord dangling below it. I'll look to likely conceal this sometime in the future. In the meantime, I went ahead and used my box level to mark a spot directly above the outlet. When installing, it might be a good idea to place it near the entrance you most often use. For me, that's the garage door. All sensors and brackets come with drywall anchors and screws. Not mentioned in the instructions, but you'll need a 3 16 inch bit to pre-drill the holes. A quick check with the torpedo to make sure everything is level, and then it's time to plug in and move on. Thus far, everything has gone pretty smoothly. I wish that pattern had continued with the contact sensors. You're required to mount them within one half inch of each other, and found that to be more or less accurate. Beyond that, the system just thinks the door or window is open. This is a bit of a problem in situations where you have things like a door recessed from the surrounding trim or casing. The way I've got it set up here, it works for now, but doesn't look great and I'll likely be looking to come up with something better down the road. The final step in the installation is the placement of the motion sensor. Very thoughtfully, the included bracket is able to be corner mounted so the sensor is 45 degrees to the room, and is thus able to sense motion over a wide area. Supposedly, it will not be triggered by something less than 40 pounds, aka a pet or small human. My doggo is about 22 pounds and has yet to set it off. So that's about it for installation. The last thing I wanted to try was to arm the system and set it off on purpose. To do this, you can either press the arm button on the keypad or arm it from your app. Whenever doing so, there is a 60 second exit delay. This is displayed on the app, the status ring on the keypad, and the LED indicators on the base station. After arming, I went ahead and opened the back door. The system was immediately set off. 
triggering an alert on my phone and firing off an ear-piercingly loud siren. It's actually quite impressive how loud it was considering it was coming from a little 8 by 8 inch plastic box. After everything was completed, I estimate the entire process took about 2 hours. Longer than I anticipated, but not too bad. Overall, I would recommend the Ring Home Security System-ish. In the positives column, I would put price, ease of installation, once you get the idea of how everything talks to one another, and battery and cell backup. The last part is pretty important. If power is cut to your house, the Ring security system continues to operate. In the negative column, I would place design of contact sensors and a lack of glass breakage or noise sensor. According to Ring, the last bit is in the works, but is not yet available. To my way of thinking, having a contact sensor on a window is somewhat pointless. Also why I recommended the Amazon unit over this one. If someone were entering a window from outside, they're going to break the window, not come inside and slide it open. To supplement this product, I would certainly buy some indoor, outdoor, remotely accessible cameras. If the sensors are tripped, the last thing you want is the police or security showing up at your place if it's a false alarm. It wastes their time and then they bill you. And that will about do her for today. If you found any of this useful, a like, share, or sub is appreciated. If you thought this review was totally stupid, go ahead and let me know so down in the comments. Alright, and we'll see you next time.